zero, Oscar from 408 receiving. Go ahead, Nick. Male suspect heading east on Camber Road, wearing grey tracksuit and trainers. Assistance required. Received. Any to assist? We lost some of that. Sierra Oscar from 2 1, show us assisting, will you? No, Joy, you got away. What about her? Oh, she'll be alright. She wasn't raped. More by luck than anything. Did she see anything? No. It was Levitt. Levitt? Same M.O. as Halpin Street last month. Didn't you recognise him? A bad luck. You did your best. Where's Sergeant Boyden now? He's gone to wait outside Levitt's flat. I'll come straight, sir. He doesn't live on the Jasmine Island anymore. Thought we could pick him up for ABH. On what evidence? Well... You saw a man in the park and you chased him. It might have been Levitt. Well, he's been done for it before, sir. Yes, but when you go after someone who has just been acquitted of rape and is currently suing the Met, you better be damn sure you can make it stick. Look, I know he got away and it's annoying. Yes, sir. Tell Sergeant Boyden to leave it. Do a crime sheet and if uh, CID want to risk it, fine. Is that the letter, Scuff? Oh, yes, Scuff. Good. Bring him in. I'm not convinced, Scuff. Me neither, sir. Well, how do you wear that out? Feeling. Feeling? Well, uh, he's high profile. I'm not bothered about the Barton Street case. This has happened twice in a month, and without a quick under his belt, he just thinks he can get away with it. Gov, if uniformists are sure it was Levitt, how come they didn't arrest him? And even if it is Levitt, there's no continuity of evidence here. He wasn't seen that only near the scene of the crime. He leaves us wide open to wrongful arrest. And with respect, Gov, we carry the can. And I don't want to stand up in court and say, I'm sorry I arrested him, but my governor told me to do it. I say. Try the neighbours. That's all right by you, Alan. Excuse me. Hola. I'm DC Woods from Sun Hill. I'm looking for a Sean Levitt. Sean? Yeah. Any idea what it might be? DCI Meadows, Sun Hill. It's about your neighbour. 
Have you any idea where Mr. Levitt might be? Isn't he in? No. Look, I've told you. I don't know where he is. We just need to talk to him. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I did see him earlier on. Probably out running. Or the gym. Westways. Thanks. Sean Levitz. Yeah? I'm DCI Meadows, Sun Hill CID. Oh, I made a change from DCI Trench. Barton Street Poodles, are you? A woman was attacked last night in the Jasmine Allen estate. So? We'd like to look in your locker. Oh, this is not on! Your locker. You all right, Sean? Yeah, are you watching this, Ted? We've got Levitt downstairs. Right, I've just had a call, Gov. I'll be back in a bit. Right. I'll be five minutes, Alan. Okay. I hear you've arrested Sean Levitt. Was that wise? How do you mean? Oh, come on, Jack. Barton Street made a right mess of Levitt's case, and now we're all in the spotlight. He could be our rapist. Do you want me to do nothing? No, I just want you to be damn sure of your ground, that's all. We've recovered a grey tracksuit. That's on its way to the lab. Grey fibres were recovered at the scene of the Halper Street rape. What else? And you arrested him? DCI Trench. It was during last night's show the call came through. The show's live, is it? It's a phone-in. The record finished. We went straight on air. There's only a bit of the call on the tape. We only record what we broadcast. Right. I didn't know about the Jasmine Allen estate, but when he mentioned Halpern Street, I remembered there'd been a rape. Could be a crank, but then... Yeah, well, we'd better have a listen. It's on quarter into the moment, but I can dub off a cassette for you. You used to live on the Jasmine Allen estate. That was a question. Last night, a woman was attacked there at about nine o'clock. What were you doing at that time? For the tape, Mr. Levitt does not reply or give any indication of a reply. The officers who gave chase recognised the man as you, Sean Levitt. Is there anything you want to say? Yeah. Yeah, there is. You think you've got the right to accuse me of every assault, sex crime in the area, but you don't. I'm not going to answer any of your questions, because the case against me is complete and utter rubbish. That's not true. Look, it's all lies. And the only, only reason I'm here now is because I'm suing them at Barton Street. And you're doing anything you can to help screw up the case. Not true. I was fitted up. I never touched anyone. And yet, I had my name in all the papers. I had people shout, gob, spit at me. I've told my solicitor to sue you and anyone else responsible for my arrest. And whatever money I get, I tell you, it's not going to be enough. Hello, son Hill. It's your mother again, son. Yeah, did what last night? Hello? Mm. Go on. Yes, Sergeant, I thought CID had someone with that attack last night. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, well, according to the bloke I just sat on here, he did it. Cheers. Everyone at Barton Street was sure Levitt was the one. Well, he'd been done before, he looks the part. And for a start, he's got no body hair. Well, none at all. None that our FME could find. Well, that's Andy. Oh, no. But he's a bodybuilder, isn't he? And apparently, uh, most of them shave to some extent. So what about samples? Use the condom. And who's he suing? My DI and the DC. It gets worse. We've got the CIB all over us. What? Look, it's all going to come out in the end, so I may as well tell you now. We found some fibres on the victim. Fibres that forensic reckon came from a tracksuit. Levitt. Identical to the one we found in his locker. 
and about 10,000 others up and down the country. So, on to plan B. See how much evidence he's picked up of the victim. But there was nothing. Not one single fibre on that tracksuit that came from the victim's clothing. So? Well, we're so convinced that Levitt's our rapist. A new piece of evidence was found to back up our theory. Well, I know it sounds crazy now, but we nearly got away with it. Do you still think it was Levitt? <laughs> this uh, tracksuit that you found, what colour was it? It's grey. I think you'd recognise the voice if you heard it again, Reg. Well, yeah, he went on for long, and most of it, you know, was obscenity. Uh, yeah. Well, we've got a tape of someone. We'd like you to hear it. Is that all right, Sarge? And keep him. Listen, I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen. Did what? Van Dalper and Street. Well, the Jasmine Allen details haven't been released. So what do you just say, Alan? Only the man responsible could possibly have known both locations. Gov. Levitt could have made the call last night. But I agree, it doesn't sound much like him. So when was your call, Reg? Uh, about half past 11, sir. Levitt was already here. Now, listen. I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen. Did what? Nan Dalper and Street. I'm sorry? And I will strike a gun. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, as far as I can tell, it's the same. Right. Mind you, the call I got was, uh, well, a load of high-flown expletives. Yeah, I swear was. So what was the name of that voice, Professor? Greenwell. Right, get the tape to him now. And Levitt? You know damn well what to do, Alan. And you can do it. Release him. I've checked the background noise, but there's nothing in it to suggest where he might be calling from. Here we go. I've taken out the presenter's voice. Now, listen. I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen. Van Dalper and Street. And I will strike again. Could he have disguised his voice? No, obviously on a short piece it's easier to maintain a disguise, but uh, on this, I don't think so. Can you just sign here, please? Your boss not coming to see me out? I'm not going to thank you. You do all his barking for him, do you? Poodles, poodle. Pathetic. Come on, this way. Meadow's cocked up, did he? I don't know what you mean. If you listen to this, I've isolated some of the words. No. No. The owl is no. a diphthong with a centralised finishing point. Eh? Basically the way he says owl. Owl as in now, how, cow. No. No. East of Manchester. No. Uh, maybe even including a bit of Greater Manchester itself. Then there's the urn. Urn as in Halpern Street. And where's that? Well, it covers a much bigger area, right from the Lancashire-Yorkshire border, going north of Manchester to Preston and then onto the west coast. I've got a base map here, and, uh, and the boundary is showing the two accents. That's the urn, pretty widespread. But if you put the owl on top, there, See where they overlap? Oldham and Rochdale. What? I can't narrow it down any more than that. Oldham or Rochdale? And there's a tiny bit of London accent coming through on the eye of strike, more eye as in strike. And I will strike again. And I will strike again. Perhaps he's only been in London a year or so? Oh, there's one other thing. The speakers fail to contract I will to aisle. Well, aisle's much more common in direct speech. And I will strike again. So what does that mean? And I will strike again. He's reading it. Oh, don't want watch now. He could tell that. Yeah. Blimey. I know. Well, Donna's left a message to say that the Oldham police have told her that there's one face that's moved onto our ground recently. About three years ago. Ford. Tony Ford. Endless draw riding offences. Now lives on the Jasmine Allen. This lies behind Meadow Sunhill. Just have to look around. Come on, get in. Get in! Josh. Right.
So, why are you in such a rush, Charlie? Have you worked out why we're here yet? Does Halfman Street and the Jasmine Alley mean anything to you? Don't know what you're talking about. Now, I've never heard that voice before. You know, somebody sounding just like you rang up the 101 FM radio station last night. Gov! Try the pockets. <sighs> Sweatbands. Gov. Yeah? I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen in Halpern Street, and I will strike again. Last month, a woman was attacked and raped in Halpern Street. Last night, another was attacked on the Jasmine Allen. These locations are not public knowledge. So? So how come you know? I don't. For the tape, I'm showing the suspect a piece of paper that was found in his possession. Do you recognise that handwriting? Never seen it before in my life. Could you read it, please? Mary had a little lamb. It says, I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen and Halpin Streets, and I will strike again. Suspect shrugs his shoulders. I'm now playing the suspect a recording of 101 FM's phone in last night. Listen, I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen. Did what? And Alperin Street. I'm sorry. And I will strike again. Do you deny that that's your voice? I said, is that your voice? You want my voice? Yeah, this is my voice. You bastards murdered my sister. Clear enough for you. Tosh, Mr. Meadows still interviewing? Yes, sir. Alan, what's the latest? Looks promising, sir. Good. What? Out of the blue, he starts saying the police killed his sister, and we couldn't get any sense out of him after that. I've just spoken to Ford's local Nick in Oldham, sir. He was in a stolen car that crashed during a police chase. His sister was killed, two others badly injured. Ford was at the wheel. I hear you had an accident. What? You lost control of a car. No. Couldn't handle a Cosworth engine. What do you mean? How come you crashed? I didn't crash. You were driving. I didn't crash. Was she killed outright, or did she die in hospital? They killed her. You were driving. They pulled out in front of me. Men out with me, they lost it. They were lying. Like you did about calling the radio station? No. I will strike again. You won't get away with it this time. What? Fit any evidence to suit you. Lying in court. It doesn't happen. I think I'm stupid. I know it happens. Happened to me. Happened to Sean. Sean? Sean Levitt? No. Who then? Nothing. How do you know Sean Levitt? Could they both be involved? Who? Oh. Taking it in turns. Well, the MO is so consistent, it has to be the same bloke every time. Ford's got no previous for any sex offences, yet he's the one who phoned the radio station. He's a right build and he lives in the Jasmine Allen. So the mention of Levitt just now is pure coincidence. Why would Ford cover for him? There's certain things you do for your best pal, but letting him rape is not high in the list. Sworn up members of the Injustice Club. Both hate all coppers. How would they have met? Well, they always help each other out on the weights. Sean's had a lot of experience. Tony Ford, quite new, but dead keen. And what else? Well, we've all heard about Sean Levitt. Heard what? Well, you know, the allegations. He discussed them, did he? No. He kept it pretty much to himself. But he was close to Ford? Yeah. I mean, when Sean found out that Tony was having similar problems with the police, he sort of took him under his wing and it went on from there. How do you mean? Well, Sean's taking action out against the Met, isn't he? So to Tony, that's like, you know, walking on water. Well, we've got Tony Ford under arrest and we'd like to look at his locker. Sure, sure. So where do you get the tracksuit? Tony and Sean wear them as well. Yeah, well, uh... A friend of mine had a job, lot of them, you know, and I sold a few of them on. It's all done in good faith, like, you know. There you go. Tony Ford by two, did he? No. So who is his this? We found his at his flat. Oh, well, I suppose it could be Sean's then. Come to think of it, he did buy a spare. Well, I would love it one, two identical grey tracksuits. Well, there wasn't any other colours. Sean came round to your flat last night, didn't he? 
You tell you'd been out running and the police, what, just happened to set upon him? You'll do anything to fit him up. What I don't understand is why you think we go to so much trouble. He's suing you. He wasn't suing anybody when Barton Street arrested him. Now, you think the police are against you because of the car that you crashed. But why are they against Sean? What's he done? Did he tell you he'd been to prison? Yeah. Did he tell you what for? Armed robbery. Oh, really? So when Barton Street had a rapist in their patch, they thought to themselves, the way to solve this is calling all the local armed robbers. I don't think so, son. See, what we have here? One grey tracksuit. A handy cosh size weight. And a packet of condoms. The man we're looking for knocks his victims senseless, then uses a condom to rape them. He has two identical tracksuits. One he rapes in, and then he hides, because it's covered in evidence from each of his victims. The other one he wears the rest of the time. Now, we've been looking for the wrong tracksuit, but not anymore. And guess what? I bet that this lot fits you. It was found in your locker. It was your voice on the tape. I did the woman on the Jasmine Allen. I don't think we need to look any further. You can't do this. All the evidence points to you. Sean Levy asked you to make those phone calls, didn't he? Because he knew you'd do anything to foul up the police. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. And the clothes? Sean's. Sean Levitt. Hold off. Sean Levitt, I'm arresting. Right, I'm ready. Start again. Sean Levitt, I'm arresting you on suspicion of rape. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you say may be given in evidence. Oh, who's fabricating the evidence this time? There's no need to. It was all over your tracksuit. Oh, rubbish. You're not trying that again. Oi, we're talking about your other one. The one you keep in Ford's locker, yeah? Tony Ford? I should have a camcorder. You could have seen just how much your face just fell. Take him away. Hang on, Tosh. Alan, 